everybody, Jace from Alphatone Audio back again today. Gonna do something a little bit different. I wanna talk about a pedal board build I'm doing for a customer. He just got himself a brand new Schmidt Array pedal board. And while I don't really wanna do a review of these pedal boards, I will say that if you're kind of in the market for something like this, like a very high end, very attractive looking pedal board with a lot of features, I think if you want one, then and you actually pull the trigger on it, you're not gonna be disappointed. These are really high quality, great looking pedal boards. So like I said, even though this is not really gonna be a review of these, I do wanna talk about a few specific things that if you're gonna do a pretty nice clean wiring build on this that you want to keep in mind. So first of all, uh, Velcro, loop side down, uh, does come pre-installed on the board. And I bring this up because I had a customer once and he wanted to go dual lock instead of Velcro. So I had to, re and he had the largest one you could get. It's like. 36 inches, something like that. And so he wanted to get dual lock. So I had to take all the Velcro off. It was a bear by absolute. I mean, for sure, it was the most difficult part of the build. Uh, it is incredibly strong bond. And it just looks like they're decent. I guess standard Velcro. It's not like a really specific product I hadn't seen before, but it was a pain and very difficult to peel off. However, I will say that when I did peel it off, it didn't leave any residue. And chance are it was a it was a used board, so I don't really know how long it was on there. But I think if you had a new board, it might not be quite as difficult. However, it did not leave any residue that needed to be cleaned off, and it didn't take any of the paint off either. So if that's something you want to do, um, you can certainly do that, but it is going to be a bit of work to get that Velcro off. So get those open up and I want to talk about a few things on the inside. One of the really nice features about these boards is this built-in patch bay. Uh, they have a color coded and in the manual, they kind of give you some recommendations on how you can do it. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, it also doesn't specify, but these are all TRS jacks. If you want to run stereo on any of these, or if you have like a two button foot switch or something like that, I uh, will say there is a nice feature in here. They, the way they basically lay it out is they do like, uh, black is you plug your guitar in here. This goes to the input of the amp. This is the effect send loop of the amplifier. And this is the return. They do two if you want to do return in stereo. And this is for foot switch. Or if you just run a mono, they say use these two for foot switches. Now, again, it doesn't really matter. They're essentially just pass through. So however, there is one little trick that if you're normally using an amp with an effects loop, then you would be using these two as well. Uh, now, if you or in a situation where you don't have an amp with an effects loop, then instead of just using this one to go straight to the input of your amp, then you can just use this one. And it, this will actually normal these two jacks together and it will close that effects send loop for you. So you don't have to put a patch cable in the back or anything like that, which is pretty nice. As far as the power connection goes, it's a standard uh, male IEC on the back and female IEC on this side. And what you get is you don't get a power cable with it. You actually just get this. And I've already got this one wired up, but what you would just get is this uh, adapter. And what you would normally do is you just buy a standard IEC cable and you would cut one end off and you would wire it into that. Now it's, it's very easy to do. You don't have to solder or anything. All you need is a blade screwdriver to do it. It takes about five minutes. If you don't feel comfortable doing electrical work, that's fine. You can buy cables that have the standard IEC plug on one side, which is this, what we're used to. Um, to this end. So it's basically a male to female IEC plug. You can get them just like a few bucks on Amazon, plug it in, no big deal. Of course, it is going to be a bit long. You usually, you can't usually get them like shorter than three feet. So you can have a little bit extra cable, but if you don't want to mess with that, that's totally cool. Uh, no worries. Now, the other thing is if you're going to do that, or if you're going to make your own cable, let's just say this plug is in here. There's only one spot where you can actually do the power on this board. Some of the longer ones, uh, the wider Schmidt Array pedal boards, I think they actually have two. Like you could actually choose like which side of the board you want the power on. This one only has one. So when you go to bring your power supply in, we'll run an Azuma on this build. On this particular one, it's a little unfortunate in that on the Zuma, the way the IEC jack is mounted, this IEC cable wants to go this way, which means I have to loop it back around and then over to the power input on there. Um, now what I've done before, unlike Voodoo Labs power supplies, is you can actually like take the top off and you can actually take two bolts out and you can flip that around. One of the other things you can do is you can actually buy IEC cables in either left or right orientation. And I'm gonna put links in the description where you can get both of those. So basically instead of like having that cable come out, you have to loop it back around, it did just come out and at right angles in the correct direction. And again, those are just like less than $10, very easy to get. So I don't have one right now, I've got one in the mail, but this is what I'm gonna use right now just so I can get this build going. Now another thing, just to keep in mind in general on any board that has this, uh, has your Velcro pre-installed, 
Um, and as you're getting stuff, kind of getting your pedals situated, figure out where you want everything. If you already have Velcro on the bottom of your pedals, you notice it's kind of a pain as soon as you put a pedal down, you have to rip it back off. Just get some paper laid in there. So when you have Velcro on the back, you kind of get everything sorted out, then you can just sit there and you can move it around and kind of figure out where everything needs to go without having to constantly pull it off. Now, another thing about these, and again, this is a smaller board, so this is a slightly different hinge design. The larger boards have more of like a cabinet type hinge and they actually come out pretty far. It's maybe like a half inch, three quarter inch, and they're kind of folding. So when you fold it up, they kind of flatten out and go out of the way. But when you push it down, they actually come down quite a bit off the surface. So what happens is maybe you start early, you kind of get everything in place, get everything wired up, and then you go to close your lid and it doesn't close all the way because the bottom of the hinge is actually hitting your pedal or your power supply or something like that. So you would actually have to go back and just kind of move. And maybe it's no big deal, you just move over half an inch, whatever. But one of those things as you're doing the build, make sure that you're kind of moving things from time to time just to make sure that you're not pinching any cables or your hinges are not coming down and actually hitting a pedal or something like that. And one last thing, for all the removable or moving parts on the board, you always have this kind of like pin system where you have either a pin or you have something like this on the bottom of a removable panel part. And they all fit into these type receivers, which looks like just like two very large ball bearings that are in some kind of like spring mechanism here. Uh, these mechanisms actually have on, on both sides, they're gonna have a screw where you can loosen or tighten these. So on something like this, where you may wanna like pop on and off like a few times, um, or particularly on the lid, where you just want to, you know, maybe just kind of like open it up from time to time to change settings in a pedal blow or something like that. You can actually have these pretty loose. So when you when you close it, yeah, these are tight. Still very tight. When you close it, it's very very tight, but it's still not so tight that you can't pick it up. And again, that is adjusted by the screw right here on the end. Now on something like the patch bay, when that's generally installed and you're not gonna take it out, you probably wanna get those down pretty tight. Now when I say it's pretty tight, like it, it becomes impossible to remove it. Uh, the only reason I say one pretty tight is I've gotten them before where they're pretty loose and you go to plug your guitar and the whole patch bay just falls out. Now I'm not saying it's like a cheap part or anything like that, they're very high quality and they do have a lot of retention ability. Just adjust the screws on the side to get it where you want it. Okay, that's all for now. I'm actually going to do the build and we'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you how I chose to wire everything. And we're back with the completed board. Everything went pretty well on this. Definitely a little bit tight. Um, layout is on the top, just as the customer wanted, except we did have to make one switch here, which I'll get into in a minute. So you can see how things got wired up. Use a lot of these cable tie mounts. Can just kind of like, you know, spread around all the flat surfaces. And I pretty much only just put power on those. And I put all the power in first and I come through and do the audio because the power just tends to not change up quite as much as the audio does in case you just want to use, put in new pedals. You may want to change your signal flow a little bit or something like that. But the, and again, everything on here is nine volt and has, you know, more or less the same kind of current draw. So usually when you swap out pedals, most of them just kind of have the same kind of power requirements anyway, especially out of the Zuma, when you have 500 milliamps on each port, it's really helpful. So it's not like you have to do a whole bunch of juggling around or anything. It's like, well, this one doesn't fit in a standard 100 port or anything like that. So uh, the Zuma is definitely a nice platform to work from just because it, you don't really have to just keep track of your current as you go because it has so much. So that's pretty clean there, pretty happy with the way that, that worked out. Now down here on this uh, platform, you will see I did have to raise the blues power up a little bit because I got in this little jack forest between the side of the tide water and the side of the blues power because of this DC, uh, DC jack location. Everything got tangled up and I just couldn't fit everything. I, I mean, I could if it was pushed forward a little bit, but then the knobs in the tide water were actually hitting the front of the shelf here. So the easiest way was to just bring this up a little bit and that allowed me to bring the tide water back down and then everything fit. And this should be pretty sturdy on there, that system. Um, this is basically just some um, half inch plywood that I just cut like you know, little rectangles out of and I had a couple of these already pre-made so I just stuck on in there and I have a layer of dual lock holding on to the Velcro on the bottom. And of course there's dual lock on the top that allows uh, the pedals secure to these platforms. So it holds pretty sturdy. Um, if if I knew that this was gonna be like a road rig and he was gonna be out gigging with it all the time, then I would use one entire platform, the whole width of this and like really secure this down. But I think he's gonna be okay with this. It's it's not going anywhere, put it that way. So if you look at this whole platform, this does pop up. And I did kind of a similar thing with the cable mounts and how I routed all the power in there and also down here on the bottom. And the, the reason why 
make it kind of neat under there even though you don't see it. It's because if you ever do want to pick this up and reroute something, if you have everything to be a mess, then there's like five points of contact. There's three of these mounts plus two feet. And if you have a whole bunch of cable down there, then you have to make sure that everything gets pushed out of the way and nothing's going to be in the way when you go to put this back down. So I'd rather control as much as possible. So then when I do go and put this back down, I just have that one little cable right there. I have to move out of the way. Then it's pretty straightforward. And I could probably take out on and off 10 times. I can get it. Um, get it back on pretty easily. It's not going to be like a big hassle where there's always going to be some cable in the way or something like that. And just coming in a little closer, see I have uh, anything that's close to the sides, I actually kind of keep it down low. So when this top lid comes down, I don't have any cables running up high or like anything coming on top of the power supply that's going to create any kind of a clearance problem. And I always like to label each of the individual outputs on the power supply. It just helps me to keep track of what's getting power and what's not when I'm doing the build. And of course, after your, you know, once the board goes into service, it's always nice to have as an additional troubleshooting step. So if something's not going to power, this is a first line of defense as far as actually troubleshooting and seeing what's going on there. So this is, I, I call this like a pretty neat board. This is probably about as neat as I get. I know there's uh, some guys out there that are doing like really, really super custom length, super, super clean, everything perfect, right angle builds. And, and that's cool. And from a, from a discipline and a skill standpoint, like those are really fun to look at. Uh, but for me, as, as soon as you need to swap out a pedal, all that stuff goes out the window. I mean, if you do everything exactly cut to length, all of a sudden you have a pedal that has side mount jacks, and then you want to swap it out with something that has top mount jacks, then you're out of luck, and those cables are not going to reach. And if the power jack is in a different location, then you're out of luck, and you're cutting up tons of zip ties, you're having to make new cables, all that kind of thing. So I just use all the stock power cables for the customer request on this, so there's actually quite a bit of slack on all these. And even though I did a whole bunch of cable mounts, you see I don't actually use every single one, and if the customer actually wanted to get a couple extra inches of slack on the power or any of the audio on this, it actually wouldn't be that big a deal. He may have to cut like one or two zip ties, but, or, but then even then, I don't really crank these zip ties down too much, so a lot of times you can actually just slide those cables back and forth inside those zip ties, just to make it easier in case you want to swap anything out. So again, if you know you're going to go on the road for like a few months and that's going to be your board layout and nothing's going to change, you can kind of lock it down, that's fine. And then if you have to troubleshoot, then you have to troubleshoot. I mean, there's, there's not much you can do about it. But if you know it's just a board, you, you just swap a lot of stuff out, you like to change things out, then why go through all the hassle of doing like a really, really super detail oriented build only to have to like start cutting zip ties and pulling new cables and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to share this. You can see how tight this ended up being right here. I think there's only about like a, there's about an eighth of an inch between the top of these knobs and the, and the end of this ledge. And the blues bar is just, it's almost touching right there. But we got everything to fit. Uh, there's no strain on anything, so everything moves just a little bit, which is fine. So there's no extra strain in this jack. There's no cables being pulled or anything like that. So this one's ready to go. Mailing this one out tomorrow. Uh, thanks, dude, for your opportunity to build another board for you. And I uh, hope this was helpful for everyone. If you did find it helpful, uh, please consider giving a like and a subscribe. And I will see you next time.